Hey there, and welcome back to another Dragon Prince video. And my god, it's been a long time between installments, hasn't it? I remember when the first season released back in 2018, it was a breath of fresh air. A fantasy show that champions diversity and representation, and has an excellent plot and character development? Hell yeah, sign me up! And I think a lot of people agree with that sentiment. Whether it was the idea of this show being interested in portraying LGBTQ plus relationships and themes, another show promising dragons and elves, magic swords and all that fantasy goodness, or even just the idea of watching a show co-created by the head writer of Avatar The Last Airbender, which is widely considered to be one of the all-time greatest animated shows, the hype behind this thing was real. People were excited. People were ready. And then it came out, and it was really, really good. Season 1 was very popular with praise heaped out for its attention to story and its well-written characters and narrative, its ability to tackle complex themes and do them justice, and especially its lack of fear in dealing with darker subject matter, its excellent animation style which feels reminiscent of the Avatar franchise, I mean the animation version, not the blue aliens, and its witty and humorous script and quality voice acting. Seriously, I don't think there's a single character that is poorly voiced. Each character feels believable, and the actors put on great performances. And then we came to the second season in February 2019, and it was more of the same. Still great, still well paced, still funny, still heartfelt. They were riding high. And they followed that up with yet another season in November 2019, which had a similar reception. How they even got themselves a daytime Emmy win for Outstanding Children's Animated Series in 2020, and a nomination at the same awards for Outstanding Music Direction and Composition. So it's clear that just beyond fan recognition, the show was beginning to make waves from a critical perspective as well. And this obviously gave Netflix the confidence to go for that Hail Mary throw and just commission four more seasons of the show. And to me, this says that the analytics were looking very good indeed in terms of how many people were watching the show and engaging with it. So, we were riding that hype train to its conclusion. And it looked like it was only going to grow and grow, becoming more and more popular and maybe establish itself as the animated franchise of the early 2020s. The one that everyone holds up as the gold standard and references as their inspiration. The one that fans forever look back on as they continue to analyse scenes and characters and come up with new theories and ideas. Basically, it looks set to embed itself in the collective consciousness of an entire generation. And I know it sounds dramatic when I put it like that, but it's true. Look at things like The Last Airbender or The Legend of Korra, and more recent works like Miraculous Ladybug. They have hordes of fans that are completely rabid about anything to do with the franchise. And that's pretty impressive considering the first two are relatively old now by showbiz standards considering how fast that world seems to move and how much new content gets released on a regular basis. But then we come to the dark days. Delays, 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 delays. And obviously you can't exactly blame the creators for all of that. Because how the hell would the world predict that we were going to end up in a worldwide pandemic that basically shut down the majority of the world's industries for months at a time? And then have to deal with the aftermath and the fallout of all that lost time throughout the next year or so, whilst also needing to fend off further shutdowns that might have come as a result of new strains and lack of vaccinations and all that sort of thing. So yeah, I'll come out and say, from the get-go, I'm not going to blame anybody for the delays because ultimately I don't know the inside workings of what's been going on. And I'm willing to give everybody the benefit of the doubt because of COVID. And then on top of that, the actual studio that does the animation side of the show has a lot of different shows and films that they also work on. So obviously they can't just turbo the show and prioritize it above everything else to ensure that it comes out in a timely fashion. That's just not how things work. And then on top of that, I don't think the show had even been properly renewed until 2020. So it's not like they should have been expected to go full steam ahead without any future guarantees that they were going to complete the story. Imagine if they sunk lots of time and money into this, only for Netflix to turn around and say, nah, we're cancelling you. It would be a pretty big disaster for the production studio. Plus, on top of that, it seems like they're working on the next three seasons concurrently so they can have a pretty concise release schedule, like the gaps between the first three seasons, which were ridiculously short. And I can understand this perspective as well. After all, according to their little roadmap announcement thing at the end of 2021, much like they did for the first three seasons, they want to work on seasons 4, 5, and 6 somewhat concurrently as they form the next phase of the story. After all, this is what they did with the first three seasons, having started production on them way back in 2015, so three years before they released that first season of the show. And it also confirmed that they hadn't started work on this phase until 2020. So from that point of view, it's not like they're hugely behind schedule or anything like that. 
They just have a different system of how they want to go about releasing the show. And as of their recent update, it seems like we can expect a newer season by the end of this year. But that's an early estimate. And on top of that, I do kind of doubt that the release window between each season is going to be as short as it was for that first phase either. So regardless, I'm thinking this means much longer wait times. And whilst I can understand the reasoning, and I'm not blaming anybody for delays and wait times, I'm also not 100% convinced that it's the right idea. Because honestly, I think the longer that this goes on, the more at risk this show is of derailing its own hype, and sort of getting forgotten and lost in the shuffle as new franchises and series can come out to fill that gap. Now the pessimist in me thinks that 2022 is a little bit of a pipe dream for the release date. I'm thinking 2023, and so that would be four years between installments. And that is a big potential hype killer. Film franchises can get away with having longer gaps between installments. They can get away with not having a new release every year or two, because that's the expectation. There is a cultural understanding that these sort of franchises need to take their time, that films can't be made in just a year and still maintain that quality. But I think there's not that same understanding that's ever extended to TV or serialized franchises. There's the innate expectation they're going to be able to churn out content annually, because that's simply the way things have always been done. And it's probably a bit unfair, and it definitely stirs up discontent and creates a little bit of resentment. And eventually, it creates apathy in the eyes of the fans. I mean, look at when Game of Thrones, the biggest show ever, took a year off. People weren't happy about it. And because of that, I think they were more inclined to be hypercritical, simply because, oh, they took a whole extra year. That means it must be good. And I'm thinking the same shit's gonna happen here. The longer you wait, the lesser the hype gets, and the more people get annoyed, and simultaneously, whilst people are less hyped up, they somehow have higher expectations of the quality. And this is one toxic combination that almost always ends in tears. But while something like Game of Thrones could escape from their delays, fairly unscathed due to their position as the biggest show ever, until it all came crumbling down with that final season. Eek. I don't think The Dragon Prince really has that luxury, because ultimately, it's not that big a show just yet. It's decently popular, and it has a lot of fans, but this second half of the series is where they needed to consolidate that spot. But instead, I feel like these delays have the potential to reduce interest. And honestly, in some respects, I think it's already happening. People don't want to have to wait forever. And it was also made worse by the relative lack of transparency by the creators. For pretty much a year or two, there was no news. No real roadmap or timeline beyond, oh, yeah, we're working on it. And because of that lack of news, discussion starts to dry up. And I'm not saying there's no discussion, but eventually, without any fresh content, a fandom starts to shrivel up. And this is kind of what I'm worried about. A lone post after two years isn't really enough to reassure people that things are going to change. It's not going to reassure people that things are going to get better with the scheduling, and even just in keeping the fandom informed. And if we go for months without anything fresh and just radio silence, I don't see how this franchise can really take its place as one of the all-time greats like it seemed it would when it first released. But anyway, that's all I have to say, really. And I would like to say that these have just been my opinions. Now I'd like to hear yours. What do you think about all this? You think my fears are overblown, or do you agree with me? I'm curious for your thoughts, so make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know.